page 287. What the servants of gods and servants of tin gods are speaking about and fallaciously teaching is not the word of the truth, but only the word from their mouth, which they think up through their thoughts and their inner world or consciousness. And therefore, they only imitate the speeches of those who were already ones unknowing of the truth before them, and who were of the same kind in their zealotry or fanaticism, which weighs banefully on them, because they are misled. The servants of gods and servants of tin gods have taken the old scribes and false prophets as their masters or examples, who extensively falsified the real truth of the fertilization of the life or creation, and its laws and recommendations, and made it unrecognizable. They also lied that the truthly prophets were gods and children of gods, or their representatives, or substitutes, or heralds of evil, or devils. And like the old servants of gods and servants of tin gods, the old scribes and false prophets demanded your servants of gods and servants of tin gods, and those versed in godly or religious writings, also demand or command that you must join their belief or assumptions and pray to their gods and tin gods or to the evil or devil and supposedly venerable ones or holy ones and that you shall not place the real truth of the fertilization of the life or creation nor its laws and recommendations next to these. The servants of gods and servants of tin gods would very much like the light of the truth of the fertilization of the life or creation to be extinguished by the words coming from their mouth. But they are unable to do this over time because the light of the truth is perfect and will light, will light up the world in its time, even though those unknowing of the truth and the servants of gods and servants of tin gods may dislike it. And the real truth that is given to the true prophets so that they may guide the leadership of the truthly teaching of the truth and bring their cognition of the truth to you in order that it may prevail in you and liberate you from all the false avowals in gods and tin gods, in servants of gods and servants of tin gods, and in godlinesses or religions and sub-godlinesses or sects slash cults. Be knowing, or conscious, that many of the servants or gods and servants of tin gods and their godlinesses or religions and sub-godlinesses or sects slash cults seize your goods and your riches and consume them through false means of belief or assumptions, and so they attempt to lead or turn you away from the way of the truth with regard to the fertilization of the life or creation and its laws and recommendations. And truly, many amongst them heap up gold and silver by enriching themselves from you. And they clothe themselves in expensive garments and have valuable coverings or hats on their head, decorated with gold and silver and precious stones. And also they wear much valuable jewelry which they gain from your riches by exploiting you. And through their garments and their covering, or hats, and through their jewelry, they accuse or blame you for your foolishness for giving them. As a result of your belief in gods and belief in tin gods, the things which you laboriously heap up or save for yourselves to live on in old age just as the servants of gods and servants of tin gods altogether exploit you with lies and slanders or calumnies and fight or battle against you so that you cannot find the truth of the fertilization of the life or creation or its laws and recommendations so shall so you shall also fight or battle against them in a good wise so that you do not open your ears to their lies and slanders or calumnies of the truth, 
so that you do not present them with your riches, and do not nourish them at your breast, or do not pay for their welfare. Truly, putting off learning the teaching of the truth, the teaching of the spirit, the teaching of the life, promotes a multiplication of the truth on knowledge, because the ones who have no knowledge will be deluded even more through this by the untruth of the teachings of the false prophets and of the servants of gods and servants of tin gods who ban you the truth teaching and do not allow you to learn from it. Truly, they only want to allow you to learn things of writings and teachings that correspond to their godlinesses or religions and sub-godlinesses or sects, cults, and with their dogmas and their and submissiveness or belief, because they are zealots or fanatical believers who make the goodness and the truth of the fertilization of the life or creation and of its laws and recommendations appear evil or devilish and make the real evil appear pleasing to you. Do not be believers in gods and tin gods, and in their servants or hands slash helpers, for whom you are supposed to cast yourselves down onto the earth and worship and honor them. When they say to you that you shall walk on the way of the gods and tin gods, truly you shall turn to the truthly life here below on earth and be content with it. However, you shall not pray to gods and tin gods, or to people of your kind or human beings who raise themselves up as gods, their envoys or representatives or substitutes. And truly, the enjoyment of earthly life is not small, but very great and full of happiness and joy, full of peace and love, freedom and consonance or harmony, if you follow the teaching of the laws and recommendations of the fertilization of the life or creation the teaching that is given through the teaching of the truth, the teaching of the spirit, the teaching of the life. And the laws and recommendations of the primal power or creation not only demand or recommend to maintain peace, love, and freedom and consonance or harmony amongst all people of your kind or humankind, and to take care not to go out to fight or wage battles or wars, but they also demand or recommend <clears throat> that you do not practice outrageous or inhumane punishment on people of your kind or human beings, and that you shall not harm the body and life of people of your kind or fellow human beings, either their inner world or consciousness or the psyche. Truly, you have might over all things, but be fair and use your might rightfully as well. Help people of your kind, or the next ones, and help the other people of your kind, or fellow human beings, just as you shall also help all people of your kind, or humankind, so that everyone may escape from unknowledge, hardship, and misery, and are not forced to remain therein and teach them that they must not be sorrowful for their unknowledge, their hardship, and their misery, if they turn to the truth which contains love and knowledge, as well as peace, freedom, and consonance or harmony in itself, by means of which every person of your kind or human being can elevate himself or herself to the highest heights and no longer debase themselves through the word of the slanderers or calumniators against the truth and the laws and recommendations of the fertilization of the life or creation. But do not go forth, lightly or heavily, or in lightness or onerosity, and do not struggle with your goods and riches, or with your blood, for the sake of the truth, because love, peace, freedom, consonance or harmony, as well as joy and happiness, cannot be purchased with goods or riches, or paid for with blood. And do not take any reward or any other gain if you teach the teaching of the truth, 
the teaching of the Spirit, the teaching of the life, with your own mouth, amongst people of your kind, or fellow human beings, so that you are not as the servants of gods and servants of tin gods, who pronounce with their mouth their false teachings of the false prophets for a high reward, and blind or delude you before altars, and who also rebuke people of your kind or human beings from high places or pulpits in hypocrisy. Never take any compensation or payment if you proclaim the truth teaching out of your mouth, because the truth is not yours, but rather belongs to the fertilization of the life or creation and its laws and recommendations. Therefore, you shall not conduct commerce with it through your mouth, because it is unrightful to trade or sell the truth teaching or advice from it through the mouth in return for compensation or payment. However, it is indeed rightful for you to take signs of gratitude or gifts for your teaching and advice from your mouth if you do not demand or ask for the same, but rather if it is given to you out of voluntariness and kind-heartedness. And it is rightful for you to take compensation or payment for the journey if you go out and travel in order to explain the truth teaching through your mouth at a, de at a desired location. And also it is rightful for you to take an exchange or purchase price slash remuneration if you produce writings and sources or books with the truth, truth teaching and you release or sell them. If you follow the truth of the laws and recommendations of the primal power or creation, then your worries will be taken away from you, and truly you will not lag behind in your unfolding or evolution, because when you know the real truth and follow it, things will be fine with you. And truly, if you recognize the truth and follow it, then you will recognize those amongst you who want to do you harm and who are liars and slanderers or calumniators against the teaching of the truth, the teaching of the spirit, the teaching of the life. So you will be able to guard yourselves against or watch out for them and not allow them to make you turn away from the truth. You who know about the truth of the laws and recommendations of the primal power or creation, and about the fertilization of the life or creation, and who follow the laws and recommendations, you do not have to apply in yourselves, especially for permission, to be liber liberated from strife, and not to fight with goods and blood for the truth. Because through the following of the truth, of the laws and recommendations of the primal power or creation, you are already liberated from all strife, as well as from fighting for the truth with your goods and your blood. And you who know about the truth of the laws and recommendations of the fertilization of the life or creation, do not let yourselves be asked by those who are unknowing of the truth to stand by them and instruct or teach them with your knowledge about the truth and the teaching of the truth, the teaching of the spirit, the teaching of the life. Rather, be open or honest with them, without conceit or imperiousness, and always ready to give or pass on your knowledge, without having to be asked to do so. Do not leave people of your kind, or fellow human beings, in doubt that you will always be helpful to them in finding the truth, if they are striving to turn to the truth. And you shall not be vacillating in doubt regarding whether to help each person of your kind or next one in finding the truth if he or she is striving for it and searching for enlightenment or clarification from you. And if you are not equipped with good knowledge in the teaching of the truth, the teaching of the spirit, the teaching of the life, then do not decide to go out in order to spread the truth teaching. Rather, be adverse to such, because without sufficient knowledge, you can do more harm than good, or success. Therefore, you shall stay back, or remain at home, with the other sedentary ones, or ones remaining at home, 
if you are not sufficiently skillful or well-versed slash well-read in the teaching. If you go out to spread the truth, and you are not sufficiently skillful or well-versed slash well-read, then you will increase the worries of those who are to be taught, and also your own worries, because it is through your insufficient knowledge in the truth that you will run backwards and forwards without finding any stability, which gives rise to discord between you and the ones to be taught, because some will listen to you and some will be against you if you cannot explain the things of the truth to a sufficient extent, or insufficiently, therefore leading to doubt and misunderstandings as well as outrage or acts of gewalt. And consider that many truth unknowers and many unfair ones or irresponsible ones are only concerned with striving for chaos and forging intrigues or guilefulness against you. Therefore, they maliciously slander or calumniate you if you are not steadfast in the truth teaching. So you shall wait with the delivering or spreading of the truth teaching until the truth prevails or thrives in you to such an extent that you are able to teach it rightfully so that the unfair or irresponsible or conflict seekers or troublemakers who are unknowing of the truth cannot be averse to your explanation of the teaching of the truth, the teaching of the spirit, the teaching of the life. Truly, many amongst those who are searching for the truth search for permission to stay back in the learning or just reflect so that they are not put to the trial or proof. But truly, everyone is constantly put to the trial or proof, and cannot stay back, or cannot continue reflecting. Because the unfolding or evolution continues without interruption and cannot be stopped. Therefore, everyone is befallen by it at any moment, even if many are unknowing and unfair in their inner nature, and therefore create an inner shadow world or hell in which they enclose themselves. And there are many amongst those unknowing of the truth and unfair ones or irresponsible ones who are mocking or gloating if a calamity befalls you and are saddened if goodness and well-being comes to you. But do not heed their evil impulsations because they are unknowing and unfair and do not know what they do. And truly you can only show them compassion since they are going into confusion. Do not, however, turn yourselves away from them. Rather, show them goodness and love, and attempt to instruct them in their right attitude or behavior, of their thoughts and feelings, as well as in their assessment of things, so that they turn away from their wrongdoing and enjoy right and fairness or responsibility. And truly, nothing can befall you as your own foreordination or destiny, other than what you determine for yourselves, because just as you are your own protectors, so you are your own determiner or initiator over yourselves and your doing. So you shall always trust yourselves and decide or determine everything yourselves as is best, so that it may go well and favorably with you. If you are expecting good things for yourselves, then direct your thoughts and feelings and your deeds in a good wise towards these things, because it is only thereby that you will come to what you wish and hope for yourselves, because all power always lies only by yourselves. However, if you act against this approach, then punishment will befall you through your own blame because what you wish and hope for yourselves is not fulfilled. And if you give or donate to the poor and needy, willingly or unwillingly, simply for the sake of semblance or hypocrisy slash sanctimoniousness, then you are making yourselves guilty of deceit 
falseness or deviousness, and lying. Therefore you shall only give donations in honesty and truthly kind-heartedness, in order that you may receive honor and dignity for this in honesty. Do not prevent yourselves from honestly giving alms or gifts to the poor and needy, or to any other good cause, because if you are righteous ones or responsible ones, then you do not allow yourselves to fall into passivity when you see poverty and need which you can relieve through gifts or alms and donations. And truly, those amongst you who reproach those who are giving alms or gifts in honesty, you would probably only be satisfied if you were to receive the alms or gifts yourselves. But as you receive nothing of them, then you are angry and reproach the righteous ones, or conscientious ones, and fair ones, or responsible ones. Alms are only for the poor and needy, so those who are the entrusted ones, or distributors, charged with the distribution of alms, shall not make use or be beneficiaries of the same, because truly sharing in the benefit of the alms by the entrusted ones or distributors would be deception and thievery or theft against the givers of alms and against the poor and needy. Collectors of alms, as well as the entrusted ones or distributors, who hand over or give away slash distribute the collected alms in fair or commensurate measure amongst the poor and needy, shall not be entitled to take or siphon off a cut or percentage of the collected alms for themselves, because alms are a help in hardship which are expressly intended for the poor and needy, and from which the entrusted ones or distributors are not allowed to reward or re enrich themselves. And if people of your kind or human beings fall into hardship and misery through all kinds of inequity, cataclysm, and destruction or catastrophes, whether it be through the appearance or nature, or through the hands of people of your kind or human beings, and if goods and gold and silver or money are collected in order to help the desperate ones or those affected, whether the collection is undertaken by individuals amongst you or by several in a federation or group slash society slash organization, then it is also not rightful for the collectors or the entrusted ones or distributors to gain benefit or success from what has been collected by channeling smaller or larger parts or percentages off for themselves for their efforts or exertions in order to thereby reward themselves and to reimburse themselves for their burden or expenses. Because truly, acting in this wise is full of shame, without dignity, full of deception and thievery or theft, and contrary to the sense of providing help to those who need it. Truly, it is a primal law of the creation that people of your kind or human beings shall always be helpful to people of your kind or human beings without demanding any reward or remuneration slash compensation for this in any wise. Because this effect proceeds equally from the laws and recommendations of the appearance or nature based on the presence or existence of the fertilization of the life or creation. Do not be amazed about the stinginess of many who have great riches because they always demand more and more and greater riches, and at the same time, they cannot rein in or moderate their demand, because they do not know any bounds or limits in their greed for more and more riches. Therefore, do not be amazed about your children if they do the same to you, if they do the same as you, if you have yourselves fallen prey to stinginess greed, and riches. Do not make yourselves guilty of thievery or theft, and do not swear on the truth that things truthfully belong to you which you have unrightfully appropriated, 
because truly they are the property of others, from whom you have stolen them. Therefore you are in the unright and will always live in fear of punishment, just as you will also be accused of thievery or theft, and you must give back the stolen goods. And if you are unfair ones or irresponsible ones, and breakers of the law or lawbreakers, then you will find no refuge amongst the fair ones or responsible ones, and the righteous ones or conscientious ones of people of your kind or fellow human beings, except with those who are also unfair ones or irresponsible ones, and breakers of the law or lawbreakers. And truly, if you make yourselves guilty of breaking the laws or law-breaking, then you will only find refuge in caves or in a bolt hole if you flee there in great haste in order to escape giving account for your actions. But truly, equitableness or fairness will catch up with you sooner or later, even in caves and bolt holes. So as breakers of the laws or lawbreakers, you will not be safe from punishment in any place. Be at all times satisfied with what your life gives you and what you receive from it, what you create or work for yourselves in assiduousness, because truly your sufficiency or contentment shall not be an endless fullness or unrestricted amassing, rather a measure of modesty. Truly. Amongst you there are many who are hostile to, or make barbed remarks against, the truth, and who offend the true prophets, slandering or calumniating them, forging intrigues against them, and attempting to kill them, and you cannot accept or tolerate that they open their ears to all, and lend their attention to all, in order to advise them in goodness, whilst you, acting as seducers, are striving to make all into believers in your gods, kin gods, and demons, and to drive them into the clutches of the servants of gods and servants of tin gods. And you who are seducers, you are conspirators against the truth, and you swear by your gods and tin gods in order to please people of your kind or fellow human beings, and to seduce them, so that they may appreciate your gods and tin gods, and pray to them, and be pleasing to you, if they become believers in you. But truly, those of you who defy the truth, and the laws and recommendations of the fertilization of the life or creation, you are living in yourselves in a shadow world or hell, full of flaming or blazing fire, which burns you up from the inside in hatred submissiveness, inequity or unfairness, in lovelessness and unrighteousness or conscienselessness. So you will find neither rest nor peace, nor love nor freedom, and no consonance or harmony. Truly, you are hypocrites to yourselves, and you are permanently afraid that the truth might be revealed in you showing you what attitude or mentality you are the child of. In other words, what you are in your inner nature. Go ahead, mock now, because truly the truth will also bring your inner nature into the light, which you are afraid of. And when the time comes that the truth becomes obvious or recognizable to you, then you prove yourselves to be liars, because you recognize that you have not just chatted and japed foolishly against the truth, but have mocked and slandered or calumniated it, as you do equivalently with the true prophets and their signs or evidence of the truth. And it will not help you in any wise if you apologize to the true prophets for your wrongdoing, because you, even if they forgive you, must excuse yourselves to yourselves in order to find forgiveness in yourselves, because truly it is only if you can forgive yourselves in respect or venerability 
before the truth and righteousness or conscientiousness to which you turn that you will find truthly forgiveness because you can only liberate yourselves from your blame if you truly live in the following of the truth consider however that it is difficult for you and it requires your entire effort and attention if you are searching to liberate yourselves from your blame because as you are hypocrites so you constantly search for the protection of people of your kind or hypocrites whom you close ranks with and demand or endorse unright and forbid what is right so you go along in unright therefore it is recommended to you that you leave or withdraw from the circle of the hypocrites in its entirety or entirely and search for the way to the truth so that you truthly turn yourselves to goodness and find in yourselves and outside of yourselves love and freedom peace and consonance or harmony and so it goes well with you in everything